Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video we're going to take a look at how I've approached painting one of the Cruel Boys Gut Rippers from the new Age of Sigmar Dominion box. This is going to be a slightly longer video than normal, and I have split it up into sections, and you can see the timestamps down in the description. This is much more similar to the type of videos that I produce for our Patreon, the sort of army painting plus if you will, and they're to complement the high level display painting videos that Andy produces. And it's because of the Patreons that we're able to produce all these tutorials for you, so thanks a bunch to those guys and girls. As I say, this video is how I would go about painting the Gut Rippers for my army, and I was heavily inspired by two of my absolute hobby heroes, Carrie from Iron Sleet and Johan from the Convertorum. These guys paint a lot of old Hammer models, and I feel like the Cruel Boys have a lot of nods back to those old sort of Brian Ansell, Kev Adams sort of era orcs. So the challenge was to evoke a bit of that and put my own stamp on them too. Now let's get to it. First up is the skin, and this is an area I really wanted to focus on. There's a lot of it on the models, so it's a focal point, and it's also an area where I thought I could maybe try and do something a little bit different. I wanted to try and maintain some sort of consistency or harmony between all the different green skins that could be in an army. I get the feeling that we might start seeing more mixed sort of orc and goblin armies again, which is really cool, and it gives us the opportunity to explore lots of different green skin tones. So I'm going to use the same starting point that I did with the Hobgrots. So I'm base coating the model using Scale 75 black leather, so this is a dark purple. If I was to do this again, I would just use something like Barracknar Burgundy and add a little drop of black in. I really don't like airbrushing the Scale 75 paints, I find they're a bit of a pain, so if I could I'd use a more airbrush friendly paint. Once I've got that base on there, I'm going to do the same second stage. So this is where I'm going to use uh, Ammo by MIG Olive Drab Dark. And I'm going to hit the model here effectively like a zenithal throat, so from above really just leaving that dark purple colour in the shadows. And I think if I do go on to paint some more different green skins, I will try and stick to these first two stages uh, across all of them and then begin to diverge off. And as I say, I hope this, along with some other things, will make sure there's a bit of harmony to the army, even though it's made up of a real disparate mix of, uh, of different orcs and different goblins. So once we have a nice sort of green to work from, you see, you can just see a little bit of the purple in the shadows now we can start to change it up a little. So the first thing I've done is made up uh, quite a blue mix here. So it's a 50-50 mix of the Olive Drab Dark that we've used and Russian Tank Crew. I've also then added the same amount of thinner that I have to, uh, with the Russian Tank Crew. So effectively it's, it's um, th three equal parts. So equal parts, Olive Drab Dark, Airbrush Thinner and Russian Tank Crew. Now I'm spraying all of this as usual, 25 psi, 0.4mm needle and nozzle uh, in a Harder and Steenbeck Cult of Paint Infinity. I'm focusing here on all basically the raised areas. So I'm still leaving that purple in the shadows, but any areas I want to draw attention to, any areas that are facing upwards towards the light, are going to get this highlight colour. I really liked how it was quite a, it was very desaturated, but also a cold skin colour. I'll show you on this model as well, it's a little bit easier without the shield in the way. So we still have the purple in the shadows, but now we've got this almost grey, blue, green for our main colour. And I really like the idea that, you know, as soon as you add blue into stuff, it makes it much colder. So if we do that and we desaturate it, I like the idea it suggests that these walks, you know, they're, they're just lurking in the swamps all the time. They're, they're just unpleasant, dank, just horrible green skins, not like the ones we've seen before. And then just like with the Hobgrots, I'm going back to my black leather, so my purple colour, and as I've said before, I, I really suggest you pick a different paint if you're going to try and do this. Uh, I've stuck to the same because it's what I've used on the other units. And I've thinned this down, you can see on the card in the background there, it's, it's very thin glaze, and I'm just going to work in some of the shadows that we might have lost, uh, and also just create a little bit more shape to some of the muscles if we need to. I've got to admit, I think this is probably on the limit for army painting that I would do. Um, I really love these models. I think I said that about the Hogrots. Um, 
I'm having so much fun painting them. And consequently, that means I'm probably spending a little bit more time than is ideal to try and get lots of models and units done for an army. At the end of the day, it's a hobby meant to enjoy it, right? So towards the end, I've done much simpler uh, stages on a lot of the other bits of the model. But for the skin, for the shield, uh, for the leather, probably got a little bit more involved than I necessarily would. Maybe one or two stages more than I normally would on an army painting video. Now I'm going to give the whole model a couple of coats of gloss varnish. Now I'm using Vallejo polyurethane gloss here. You can use whatever brand or whatever type of gloss varnish you want. All we're looking for here is to create a glossy shiny model that has low surface tension on it. Uh, when you're applying it with an airbrush you're going to want to apply, or I do anyway, sort of three or four layers here and I've thinned this about three drops of thinner to varnish. Now we're going to create an oil wash and for this I'm using Abtalung 502 Industrial Earth which is this horrible dank green colour and I'm going to thin that down with odourless mineral spirits. This brand is Sansador by Winsor & Newton. And just give them a real thorough mixing together and I want to create a fairly thin wash. I knew with uh, the blue-grey skin tone on the Orc I was probably pushing it quite far for how how far you can go with a with a Warhammer green skin. Um, I like to respect the law when I'm painting models from di from different systems um, and you know as far as we're aware we I don't believe we've seen like blue orcs and purple orcs and things like that so I wanted to push it as far as I could but this was still at the end of the day a green skin which is is what they all tend to be referred to as. What I wanted to try and achieve with this grungy green wash here was not only to filter the model so slightly change the colour and to bring it back to green but I also quite like the idea that perhaps this green was being created by algae or something in the in the uh, environments that they lived in and that's what was turning the skin more green. Um, whether or not that comes across in the finished model I don't know but I certainly that's my that was my reasoning for it and I enjoyed thinking of it as that's the reason why they've got this green tinge to them. If I was going to paint a display piece I think that's an idea that I'd really try and push and, and make sure it was obvious on the finished model. Now I've left this to dry overnight. With the Abtalung 502 models they don't have um, oils rather they don't have a lot of oil in them so they dry relatively quickly um, but overnight you'll be absolutely fine as long as it's touch dry. Now I'm going to give the model a couple of coats of matte varnish. This is Amma by Mig uh, Lucky Matte. Nothing to do with the finish of the model but this is so we can paint the rest of the model and if it's very glossy it's quite hard for you to paint over a glossy surface so we're just matting it down to make it easier to paint. A few finishing touches to the skin. I've taken the same mix that we used in the airbrush for the highlight and I'm going to apply it with my brush now. And you can always do this because when we apply it with our brush it will go on more opaque so stronger than when we apply it with our airbrush because it's a thicker layer. And I'm just going to focus on features around the face and sort of maybe the backs of the hands, tops of the feet, that kind of thing but predominantly just on the face. Uh, bases and faces is an old adage for, for army painting and, uh, and I think it's you know it's certainly got merit. And these models are they're so full of character, um, particularly in the faces. Um, it's, it's, I think it's a shame not to, to bring out a bit of that detail. Now I want to add a little bit more colour into the orc here. So I'm going to take a scale 75 red leather and I'm just going to paint in the scars, the nose and the inside of the ears with this. I always enjoy seeing this on orcs where they have um, sort of have a completely different colour. It's so on the hog grots, so I used a blue. Uh, I'm going to use a pink uh, here or you know, off uh, a sort of red. And then to highlight that I've added a little bit of the layer model colour pale blue grey into it and I will use that pale blue grey to lighten all of my colours that I highlight throughout the model. Again this just helps to add a little bit of harmony across it. You see already a couple of different colours. It's really starting to come to life now. Now for the lips, we're going to use exactly the same colour that we did on the Hobgrots. This uh, almost blue uh, colour. This is a medium green ammo by MIG. It's a very shiny 
very glossy paint this um, but don't worry about that we're gonna play around with the finish later on but I really hope that the uh, they'll look right together the hog grot and the and the uh, gut ripper still look like they should they should have belong in the same army And to highlight the uh, lip, again, I'm just adding the pale blue-grey into that medium green. Just tapping along that lower lip to create a little bit of texture, as if he's got cracks in his lip. Now, orcs have got beady little red eyes, so we need to paint those in. So I've just blacked them out initially to make sure we've got good separation between the eyeballs and the rest of the face done the same to the teeth as well actually but we'll address those later and then for a base red I've used corn red that just means that my evil sun scarlet will show up better than if it was just to go straight over black so I'm filling it in with the corn red and yes one of the reasons I chose this model was because it only had one eye um, I hate painting eyes when we're filming it's uh, it's not the most comfortable thing to do uh, so next up a nice bright red so here I'm using evil sun scarlet Just getting the whole of the eyeball there, pretty much the entire area that I covered with the corn red. And then we need a highlight. So for this, I'm using an orange, any orange you like. I think I used Fire Dragon Bright from Games Workshop for this. Just a little dot to one side of the eyeball. Another major focal point of the miniature is the shields. And I really enjoyed doing that Scare Shields video the other week and it was fantastic response from you guys. And a lot of you asked, oh, why didn't you do a yellow shield? Well, I did do a yellow shield and it looked awful. So I just left it off the video. But when I looked at this bit of artwork that was the inspiration for that video, I was really drawn to the center face, the, the, the yellow face on the bottom row. And I thought I've got to try and do this. And especially after I'd seen Carrie do it uh, and then Johan do it on one as well, I was like, I've got to give this a go. So here's my take on this classic yellow orc shield. First up, I'm going to base coat using Vallejo model color, hull red. It's got fantastic coverage on it. I've thinned it with a little bit of water. It's taken me two coats to get a nice smooth finish to work off. And I'm going to choose a, a red base here because I want to try and keep this shield a, a relatively warm uh, set of colors just to add a little bit of contrast against that very cool skin tone. If I was to paint red shields, I would probably use this as a starting point as well. Now our first yellow is going to be Vallejo model color English uniform. And I'm going to sponge this all over. And the reason I'm going to sponge it is I want to create tons of texture. I want this shield to look like the orc has painted it. I suppose I should be saying orc really. But I want to make it look like this dude's painted his own shield. I love the background that this is meant. This It's covered in grime and toxins and uh, glow in the dark just sludge it's, it, I just and they sort of jump out and waggle it around at you and scare people I, I just think it's a brilliant idea um, so I, I really want to try and get this shield right and as I say it's a real classic image this uh, yellow orc shield so my second yellow so the highlight yellow is Vallejo model color Japanese uniform again I'm going to sponge this over slightly less of the shield um, but still plenty of it you can see I went really heavy with the English uniform, so only leaving that whole red in the sort of deepest recesses. Because I'm going to do a few more stages after this, I wanted to make sure the yellow had plenty of punch. So I'm just using quite a thin glaze of Games Workshop Yand and Yellow Contrast Paint. So I've watered this down a little. I'm just going to wash it over. It's kind of like using an ink, just to, just to bump that colour up a little bit. Now I'm going to give it a wash using an oil. This is Abtalung 502 Coagulated Blood. So I've made this wash up exactly like we did with the uh, Industrial Earth one earlier. We don't need to varnish the model or anything like that. It's not going to react with the paint underneath. Just get it on there. Let's get a little bit of extra colour and interest. Now this dried very, very quickly. This is about an hour after I applied it, just left on the side. 
is quite hot at the moment, so it dried you know quicker than perhaps normal. Now I just want to go in with my Japanese uniform again. I'm just going to stipple on a few little highlights that the oil has, has dulled down. still want this to be a, a yellow shield. And as long as that oil is dry, you'll be able to paint over the top, no problems. I wanted to put this little bit of green on the bottom like we saw on the uh, the artwork. Uh, and rather than sponge it, I'm going to stipple it on this time. So I've used this, uh, <laughs> was it German tail light green, I think it's called, um, by Vallejo again. Um, you could use something like Cabalite Green by Games Workshop or whatever, it's just it was in front of me on my shelf and I was like that's the right colour. And then I wanted a brighter green as well, and for this I've used Games Workshop Moot Green. Just stippling a little less of this on. So again I'm all just trying to reinforce that idea that the, the Oric himself has painted this shield to look as, as scary as it can be. And maybe this is some weird fungus that he's slopped on from, uh, from the swamps. Now, I've painted the other details in in black on the shield. And for the teeth, I'm going to base coat them with US Olive Drab. I'm also going to do this to the teeth on the actual Auric as well. So once we've got that base coat of the Olive Drab on there, we're going to do some real simple mixing on our palette to highlight it up. So I take a roughly a 50-50 mix of US Olive Drab, and then a, an ivory style colour. So I've used a GW Carrack Stone. And we just start to highlight the teeth up. I actually ended up using a lot of colours on this model. Uh, I thought it was going to be quite, quite monotone. I was a bit worried about it. Um, but when I was jotting them down to sort of make sure I could list them for you. Um, I did realise quite how much paint I used on it. But I think it was worth it. It was good fun. I think it looks pretty cool at the end. So I just add increasing amounts of the Carrack Stone. Just to create those highlights. And those teeth, bar is a lie patch, those teeth are going to finish off the face, that focal point of the miniature. So we've got the face as a focal point, we've got the scare shield as a focal point. Those are the two things that I really wanted to nail on this model. You notice on the artwork as well, there's a bit of pink or red around the, the gums. Uh, I don't know whether he thinks the shield's been eating things or blood or whatever. So I've just gone back and used some of that coagulated blood colour. Uh, this time I'm applying it uh, neat, so uh, completely undiluted. Just stippling it on around the mouth uh, and then I clean my brush off in my mineral spirits wipe off all the excess so it's just a slightly damp brush here and I just sort of feather it and uh, thin it out a little to blend it in a bit more get a little bit on the teeth as well uh, let's suggest this is what the orc's trying to say that his, his shield's eaten someone or his interpretation of it anyway so I think I've put more colours and paint on this shield than I have on quite a lot of other models that I've painted. The metals will finish off later. The last major thing that I wanted to cover in this video is the leather. Now this caused me some real issues when I was doing the testers. Um, I tried some browns, some purples, and the whole model just started to look too dark. And I think that's great if it's just a one-off model on the shelf or a photo. But for gaming with, if, if they're too dark, there's not enough contrast, they just look really, really boring. And then I thought, okay, they're in the swamps. What are they going to make their leather out of? Well, we've got crocodiles in our swamps and alligators and things, right? I don't know which one it is. One of them. And reptiles, let's say. So I was like, well, what if they made their leather out of reptiles that were living in the swamps? Why can't we have the leather be green? And this was another nice way to reinforce the whole green, the green skin thing, even though the skin itself is, is quite blue. So to base coat the leather. I'm going to use a 50-50-ish mix of Rhinox Hide and Castellan Green, GW Castellan Green. Um, you could just go straight for the Castellan Green, I just found it didn't cover brilliantly over the black. 
A few people have asked, why do I black out the details before carrying on? And partly it's to help show you in the video the bits we've been working on. But I also like to do it because often I won't add washes to models later on. Uh, I don't necessarily like the effect. And by blacking out all the errors, I help create a little bit of separation between them. So there's a bit of definition between parts of the model. So work my way around until I've got that sort of brown green that you can see here on it. Now I go straight to the Castellan green. I thin it down with a little bit of water. I'm just going to sort of stipple or smoosh it on really. Um, I don't mind if it's a perfectly smooth coat. You know, I'm happy for there to be a little bit of texture uh, in there. I really enjoy painting things like leathers and, and different materials, um, particularly ones that, that have a more of a coarse texture. I think they're just fun. It's just, it's just more fun than colouring in uh, with a smooth coat. Just going to work my way all around the leather parts. Uh, the stitching I'll come back later and black out and I'm going to paint that the same as I'm going to do all the straps on it. Now the first highlight is going to be scale 75 goby brown and we're going to stipple this all along the edges and then we're just going to paint tons and tons of little scratches and scratches all over the leather. It really doesn't matter how accurate you are with this. All I would say is just try and keep them really, really thin and try and keep them really, really random. So not the same size going in different directions. Again, we're just trying to create texture on the model here. So I'll make sure I get all the edges and then in some of the centers of the panels of leather, I'll put these little scratches across as well. I'm going to do exactly the same with a lighter green colour. So this is Games Workshop Elysian Green. So tapping all the edges, creating some scratches. And the idea behind this is by using these two different colours, we create sort of different ages of scratches, different depths of scratches. The most important thing here is that our last colour, so in this case the Elysian Green, is significantly lighter than our base green. So if I was doing red leather, I, could, I would use a dark red and then I would use a very light red to scratch with. Yellow the same, brown the same, whatever. So hopefully you can see here a bit easier now. It does take a little while, but there's skin, there's the shield, and there's the, uh, the leather. Those are the three major parts of the model. The rest I'm going to do pretty much exactly the same as I've done on the hog grots. So all the straps and all the uh, stitching and everything, I'm going to base coat in Rhinox Hide. Which is nice, sort of warm red brown colour. Then we'll highlight it up using Mornfang Brown. I actually did one additional highlight when I'd finished this. I didn't think it was quite enough on the front of the model. Uh, so I just added a little bit of pale blue grey into the Mornfang Brown and added one additional highlight. When all that was done, I gave the model a couple of coats of satin varnish. So this was the finish that I wanted for the model. This was going to unify everything together. I then gave the shield a coat of ultra matte varnish. For the other bits on the model, I've literally followed tutorials I've done recently. So for the haft of the spear, I've used the rotten wood recipe, which I will link up uh, in the top corner. Just three or four steps. And then for all the metals, I've just done exactly the same as I've done on the hobgrots. The only additional thing is I added a little bit of orange oil paint just to make them a touch rustier. If you want to look at sort of rust and that kind of thing, again, I've done some recent tutorials rather than this video being like an hour long uh, and me effectively repeating myself from what I've done recently. So I'll make sure I link all of those and also pop them down in the description so they're easy to get to. I had a few questions from the recent basing video about when do I put the model on the base. Wherever possible, if I'm army painting, I'll paint the model on the base like this and then I'll do the basing material. And one of the reasons I quite like to do this with this uh, texture paint, this uh, Vallejo thick mud, is you can smoosh it up around the feet so he looks like he's sort of sunk in a bit rather than that thing where they look like they're floating on top of it sometimes. Uh, if I'd painted the model off the base, I would paint the base with this material and then whilst it was wet, I would squish the model into it to secure it, uh, maybe pin it if it was a character model. And there he is, all done and finished. So say there was three areas I really wanted to focus on on the video. 
and I've linked you to all the other bits. My main concern when I started this was, was he going to look like he belonged in the same army as the Hobgrots? Absolutely love doing them. If I love doing this Gut Ripper, there was a real danger I might actually paint an army. Um, so I hope you agree with me that I, th I think they do work together, even though they're very, very different looking. Bases obviously tie them together, but the metals are exactly the same. That blue on the lips, or medium green on the lips, is exactly the same. I've tried to use similar colours wherever possible. I'm really pleased with how this model's turned out, and I'm actually very excited to try and get the rest of the unit painted up and see what they look like together. So I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you have, hit the like button. If you're not already, subscribe because that really helps us out. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else from the Dominion box you'd like me to cover. We've still got a little bit of time, we might be able to squeeze another one or two in. So thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.